One, two, three, okay. All right, hello everyone. Who here likes vacations? All right, who, who here thinks they could use a vacation right now? All right, good. For a moment, I want you to imagine that you're on vacation. You're in the South Pacific. You're walking around on a beautiful, isolated island, tropical island in New Guinea, or just off of New Guinea, called Tana. And suddenly, you come across this. You come across a dirt runway, complete with a life-size wooden airplane, an American flag flying from a bamboo pole. What would you make of this? This is what the British naturalist David Attenborough was faced with during the 1950s in his exploration of the John Frum religion of Tana, uh, only one of many so-called cargo cults in the region. Now this particular faction worships an American GI called John as a messianic god. Um, I've spent the last year or so researching various religions uh, all over the world, and in the next few minutes I hope to, to teach you a little bit about the history and the beliefs and the practices of this particular faith. Afterwards I hope you'll use your new understanding to fully appreciate the context and the importance of the Melanesian's faith. Um, and maybe even entertain the notion that perhaps if you had been merely born a hundred years ago, their God might have even been you. Wouldn't be the first time. So first I want to share the relatively brief history of this religion. Uh, the John Frum religion began in the early 20th century with the arrival of American soldiers in the South Pacific. As Paul Raphael notes in the Smithsonian Institute website in 2006, we know this because the European Christian missionaries, who had achieved something of a um, dominant role in society back in the 1600s, had not documented any sort of cargo cult beliefs. However, many such religions sprang up independently of each other after the American military arrived in the early 20th century and recruited large numbers of locals to construct a base on one of the local islands. Um, one such group worships John Frum as their, as their god. The arrival of John coincides with the presence of the Americans. However, the US military has no record of anyone of that name serving at that time. So the prevalent theory goes that the affectionate name is just a corruption of John from America. <laughs> Essentially, we know that the John cargo cult, as opposed to the Tom Navy or the Prince Philip sex, originated sometime in the early 1900s, most likely as the direct result of a particularly charismatic American soldier or sailor. So we've learned that a particular group of Melanesians on the island of Tana began worshipping the American deity named John about a hundred years ago. What made him so special and how did they come to this conclusion? The faithful view John from as God because of the seemingly magical stuff that he brought with him, universally termed cargo uh, by the native islanders. After noticing that no white man was ever seen to do anything that could be recognized as useful work of any kind, from Dawkins' book, The God Delusion, the Melanesians must have assumed that some strange rituals that the Americans performed, such as raising flags, marching, and talking into boxes, were the supernatural source of the magical cargo. They need only reproduce these things, and the same rewards would come to them as well. So the sorts of, um, in the form of my mistake, when John would return, of course, in the near future. I see some parallels. So, this brings us into the third point, the practices. Now, the sorts of rituals that the natives performed to worship John might seem ironically familiar to you. This is because they're based on practices that they observed Americans performing. They've simply reinterpreted them through a supernatural lens, so to speak, a supernatural worldview. For example, a tribal chieftain claimed to have regularly communicated with John by radio. Um, now, his radio consisted of an old woman wrapped in electrical wire whose incoherent speech was interpreted in a manner uncannily familiar to the ancient Greek oracle of Delphi. Um, the natives also performed military drill and, and built runways, as, as was famous. Um, obviously, these are also reinterpretations. They were, they were used as a way to worship their deity. 
So the important thing to remember is that all three of these examples were cases where normal but technologically advanced practices were thought of in terms of magic and emulated by the natives as a form of worship. There's an example right there. So to draw it all together, we first learned that the Melanesian people of Tana were visited by a charismatic American who brought all gifts of cargo sometime in the early 1900s. Then we saw how, um, in spite of the best efforts of Christian missionaries, the people believed and continue to believe to this day that John is their God and Savior and will make his good on his promise to one day return with magical cargo from everyone. And finally, the faithful hope to bring this about by worshiping John in the American way, by using radios, marching, and building airstrips. So the next time you you're traveling to an isolated place on vacation, remember John from, and be careful what you say, you might just end up as someone's God. Thank you very much.